beer, wine, spirits, fashion, luxury, rocket ships, dinosaurs. All things that will never go out of style, which is why you need Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits from stores near you, then get them delivered to your door. Skip the store run, stick to the catwalk. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Get the home field advantage every time with Fairfield by Marriott, official hotel partner of the NCAA. Whether you're a student athlete working toward your championship dreams or your team's biggest fan, Fairfield by Marriott has everything you need to get ready for game day. From comfortable guest rooms to complimentary hot breakfast, Fairfield is part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and official hotel partner of the NCAA. Visit fairfield.marriott.com to book your next game day stay. At Sleep Outfitters Outlet, great sleep is a big deal. Save 40 to 60% every day on every Sealy, Stearns & Foster, and Tempur-Pedic. Queens as low as two forty nine. dollars Customer exchanges, closeouts, and floor samples. Inventory changes daily, so come in for your dream deal today. With no credit needed financing, expert advice, and up to 60% off retail, it's never been easier to get the sleep and savings you deserve. Go to sleepoutfittersoutlet.com for financing details and to find a store near you. Without VA, I would have paid $25,000 for my hospital stay. $42,000 for my education. $74,000 for my home down payment. But because of my service, I paid zero. Get what you earn. Visit choose.va.gov. Not all veterans are eligible for the type or amount of benefits mentioned here. Welcome into The Verge, a show which covers the Baltimore Orioles minor leagues. The Verge is part of BSL Radio. Baltimore Sports and Life is dedicated to analysis and discussion on the Orioles, Baltimore Ravens, and the University of Maryland. The site has a team of writers providing coverage of those teams and houses live streaming content weekly. Join the conversations at the message board, like BSL on Facebook, and follow BSL on Twitter. Twitter. Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we discovered Spotify for Podcasters, we feel like having options like video podcasts and Q&A lets us be more creative on another level. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hello and welcome to On The Verge Daily for Monday, August 2nd, 2021. I'm your host for today, recapping August 1st games, Bob Phelan. And before we get into the game action, I would just like to note uh, some news that we've got coming out of the Orioles this morning of the good and the bad. The players out of the draft, Colton Kowser, Connor Norby, and Colin Burns, are added to the FCL roster and will make their professional debuts today. So that's exciting. But on the other end of the spectrum, with more players coming in and the new roster limits for the minor leagues uh, this season... We have some releases as well. Um, Chris Shaw was the only position player released, which is a shame because he hit a grand slam yesterday for the Aberdeen Ironbirds rehabbing an injury. But also Cody Carroll, Evan Phillips, Kevin McGee, and Jonathan Pendergast have all been released as well. Two of them, the first two, you know, Carroll and Phillips, they were acquired in trades at the 2018 deadline, pitching in AAA with not too much success. They're gone now. Unfortunately, that Zach Britton trade and the Kevin Galsman trade aren't aren't looking all that great either <laughs> is the Manny Machado trade, to be honest. Um, Kevin McGee and Jonathan Pendergast were pitching for, I believe, McGee was in Aberdeen and Pendergast was in Delmarva, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, they, they weren't having the most success either. So no real surprises there, but a shame whenever you see a guy released. And I am afraid that we're going to see a little bit more of these over the next week or so with these draft picks coming in. So that's too bad for them, but let's get into the action from yesterday, starting with AAA Norfolk, who won again against Durham Bulls 5-3, to 
on the back of Connor Wade. He pitched twice this week, and twice he pitched well. He went five innings, giving up two runs on five hits, a walk, and two strikeouts. His ERA is sitting at 2.72 for the season. David LeBron made his AAA debut, pitching an inning, giving up a run on a hit and two walks, but again, Mr. Strikeout struck out two batters. Fernando Abad had an inning of scoreless with two strikeouts. Marcos Duplan had an inning scoreless with the strikeout. And Dustin Knight, back on the horse after having his worst game of the season, recorded the save his seventh of the season with an inning giving up a hit and a strikeout and lowering that ERA again to 1.30. Offensively for the Tide, it was kind of a slow game again. Uh, Most of the damage came in the first inning on a Kelvin Gutierrez three-run homer. Uh, his first with the Orioles minor leagues affiliate. Um, let's see. Also, Zach Jarrett went two for two with a walk and two RBIs. So that's where all the runs came from. Jemai Jones had a single in a run. Mason McCoy walked. Brett Cumberland singled and scored a run. And Rylan Bannon walked and scored a run. Now, moving to Double A Bowie. They won as well, six to four against the Richmond Flying Squirrels. Cody Sedlock continues to impress of late. I would not be surprised if we're announcing on tomorrow's On the Verge Daily that he's been promoted to AAA Norfolk, uh, especially with a couple of those relievers being released. But he went six innings, giving up two runs on six hits, no walks, that's the key, and six strikeouts. And based off of our Twitter account, it sounds like one of the runs in the sixth inning came off a defensive miscue that should have ended the inning and then a run came around to score. So even he pitched better than his line indicates and he's been fantastic um, in the last eight appearances or so. He's got a 4.05 ERA, but only four walks over 26.2 innings, which is a huge improvement from the, I want to say, off of memory, the 21 walks that he had over 28.1 innings, something like that. It's a ridiculous uh, change of pace as far as the control goes, and he's got more strikeouts as well. So great to see the 26-year-old could be this year's Dylan Tate, as I described in today's Down on the Farm uh, column that I wrote for Baltimore Sports and Life, which I also posted to our Patreon. So if you want to read that, you can feel free to do so. Felix Bautista, another guy I wrote about in that same column on the three up section or the on fire section, should I say, he had an inning again, back to back games where he's recorded a save and pitched a perfect inning, striking out the side. His ERA is down to 0.79 with the, uh, with double A Bowie. After a 1.20 ERA in high A Aberdeen, he's striking out a million batters. He's only given up eight hits on the season uh, with over 26 innings pitched. And he has walked 19 batters in that span, but also struck out 48, which is a pretty insane number. The guy can touch 100 miles an hour, and I would not be surprised if we even saw him at Baltimore in September of this season. Although I think it's more realistic that he just starts AAA next year with the Tide as long as he's not taken in the Rule 5 draft. Offensively for Bowie, um, Kyle Stowers just, man, this guy, you keep waiting for him to go through a slump and kind of come back down to earth a little bit, but he just continues to rake three for five with a double and a run. His batting average is up to 313, OPS at 992. Just fantastic stuff. He continues to climb up my personal uh, prospect rankings. Uh, He's just very exciting between him and Robert Newstrom. Those two have really... uh, surpassed Yusniel Diaz even in my opinion uh almost Uh, we'll see officially whether that happens or not but that's the way it's trending right now um let's see Adley Rushman he finally broke through with a hit a run RBI one for five um not the best week for him but it's Adley Rushman you know what you're getting Richie Martin finished out his rehab assignment for double a Bowie with a double two runs and a walk he's got a 954 OPS in that short stint of a rehab appearance great stuff hopefully we see him in triple a soon toby welk went 0 for 2 but he walked twice and scored a run zach watson one for four johnny riser one for four and kaden greener two for three with two rbis and a walk so he's he's proven to be a league average wrc plus around 99 for double a and with his defense that is probably good enough to you know make your major league debut at some point so good on him Moving down again to Aberdeen, they destroyed Bowling Green 10-2 to in this game, despite Ignacio Feliz struggling a bit again in his third start 
for high A. He went three innings, giving up two runs on four hits, two walks, and four strikeouts. Um, I talked about this as well in that down on the farm column that the jump from low A to high A seems almost like the jump from high A to double A used to be. Just based off of the Orioles' prospects themselves and not the league as a whole, you're really seeing even offense or hitters and pitchers both struggle from that jump. Gunnar Henderson obviously went one for 31 after coming up from Delmarva. Jordan Westberg got off to a slow start before really coming into his own uh, at high A. And the pitchers, all these guys that were doing great in low A, are coming up and struggling right off the bat. I'm sure they'll adjust, as Ryan Watson did, who got the win in this game. Went three innings, scoreless, two hits, two walks, three strikeouts. But it's just it's interesting with the new way that the minor league system is working this year. Um, it seems like either low A is lower uh, competition than usual. High A is a little bit tougher or a little bit mix of both. Um, Garrett Farmer finished off this game for his fifth save, three innings, gave up one hit, no runs, and five strikeouts. And he's been, after having a rough outing last week, uh, this past week he, he performed really well, going multiple innings in each appearance. Offensively for Aberdeen, Aberdeen, Jordan Westberg continued his hitting streak, going one for four with two runs and a walk. No, he did not walk. He got hit by a pitch. Excuse me. Um, Shane Fontana hit a home run. So shout out to him. He's got a 727 OPS on the season now. J.D. Mundy, two for five with the run. Chris Shaw, as I mentioned, that grand slam. Right? I mean, that's a way to go out at least. Gunnar Henderson, he walked and stole a base but went over three. Hudson Haskin, one for four with a run. Andrew Doshbach, three for four with two runs. He's really heating up at the moment. And Logan Michaels, this undrafted free agent catcher who bailed out Zach Peake with some block balls in the dirt as well as threw out some runners. Known for his defense, not necessarily a prospect, but he goes three for four with a double, a run, and an RBI, and is batting 500 after a few games with Aberdeen. Delmarva now, they were the only team to lose on Sunday, 7 to 16. Just was not working out. The only pitcher that had a clean outing out of six of them was Adam Stauffer, who had a perfect inning with two strikeouts, and I would expect to see him. I've been saying this for a while, but in Aberdeen very soon. Jake Lyons started the game, gave up three runs in only one inning, suffered the loss. Three hits, two walks, a strikeout. His ERA sitting at 4.00 for the season. Jake Zebron, I don't know if it's going to happen for this guy. He's still young, still could develop, but he recorded one out, giving up four runs on three hits and two walks. Leonardo Rodriguez, as I've talked about uh, in articles in the past, is just one of the most disappointing stories of this season there's not a lot of those but he is definitely one he gave up four runs on five hits and two walks no strikeouts over 1.2 innings his era is at 8.27 and this is a guy that was borderline top 30 uh, a couple years ago on our prospect list david garrard gave up three runs over three innings uh, ricky ramirez gave up two runs in an inning it just the <laughs> delmarva pitching was not on their top of their game in this uh, outing yesterday. Daryl Hernais, he went one for five with two RBIs, continuing to hit a little bit. T.T. Bowens, one for five. Gene Carmona, two for five with two runs, an RBI, and a homer. Um, he's got his OPS back up to 774, and he's not going away. He's still just 21 years old. I continue to be intrigued by his development. York is Landy Alvarez, finally one for four. He's batting 278, kind of like Daryl Hernais. He's not hitting for power, but he's He's intriguing as a, a guy who is hitting for average and could grow into some more power in the future. Well, that'll do it for today's On the Verge Daily, but stay tuned. Um, tomorrow will not be a big update. It will just be the FCL and DSL update, but if there's any promotions, I will mention it there as well. So let's see how Connor Norby and Colton Cows are doing their FCL debuts today, and thank you for listening.